So Huawei, the Chinese company, has announced a new watch, the Watch 4 and the Watch 4 Pro. And they both purport to provide high blood sugar level alerts. So in this video, I will take a look at what we know and discuss whether, how, and for whom that could potentially be useful. Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody is happy and healthy and doing well and getting out there and enjoying the summer and exercising. So yeah, if the reports are correct and the measurements are reasonably accurate, then Huawei may have done something new and innovative and quite frankly very clever that will be very useful. It's not going to be useful for everybody and in particular it will not be particularly useful for people with diabetes and we'll discuss in a second why that would be but it could potentially be very useful for the general population. So let's start by taking a look at what we know and then we can talk about whom it might be useful and why and what some of the unknowns and uh, question marks are. So what do we know? Well, they're calling it the blood sugar risk assessment tool and it apparently alerts people when their blood sugar levels spike or rise to hyperglycemic levels. Presumably so that people can relate it to foods that they've eaten to figure out which foods and drinks, quite frankly, cause their blood sugar to spike to avoid them in the future, which is just a pretty smart thing to do. Blood sugar spikes are not a good thing, and it's something that we probably want to avoid for the sake of our long-term health. But before we go any further, what do we mean by hyperglycemic or high blood sugar levels? Well, nothing good, but let's delve into the details. So when we talk about blood sugar levels, we usually mean fasting blood sugar levels. That is, after not eating for at least eight hours. And at that point, normal is in the range of 70 to 100 milligrams per deciliter. 100 to 125 would be considered elevated or pre-diabetes. And anything about 125 would be considered hyperglycemic. Similarly, anything below 70 milligram per deciliter would be considered hypoglycemic. People who don't have type 1 diabetes are highly unlikely to have blood sugar levels that are that low, but nonetheless, that is the definition. Now, this obviously changes when we measure blood glucose levels at random times, and certainly when we measure it after meals or drinking things that have sugar in them right? So after meals or drinking sugary drinks, uh, all of which of course raise our blood sugar levels, 140 to 180 milligrams per decimeter, deciliter would be considered more normal. Now this obviously raises the first question about what Hui is doing or not, as the case may be, because what we don't know is uh, whether the device or actually the software knows whether it's measuring fasting blood glucose level or just random blood glucose levels and what information the user needs to provide it to provide some guidance here. So that is sort of the first big unknown and it's one of the things that we need to get some clarification about to really be able to understand how useful this device and this software really is. And so getting back to the watch itself, one of the things that we know about it is that it does not provide precise blood glucose levels, uh, sort of specific measures. Rather, what it does is that it informs the user if their blood sugar level is either within the normal range or it alerts them if it's hyperglycemic. Uh, and that's a really important distinction and obviously for that reason it's not particularly useful for people with diabetes who need to know what their specific blood glucose level is at any particular point in time to decide what if anything they need to do. Do they need to take insulin? Don't they need to take insulin? And so from that perspective once again the watch is much more useful for people in the general public who don't have diabetes 
or potentially for people who have pre-diabetes who are not on insulin but who are trying to manage their food and drink intake to make sure that the pre-diabetes doesn't progress to diabetes. So let's talk about what we know the Huawei watch about the Huawei watch from a technology perspective. And on the face of it, they don't seem to have, and they don't claim to have, developed any new hardware capabilities, sort of along the lines that we've talked about in prior videos that, you know, other companies that are working on non-invasive wearable glucose measurement have been working with, whether it's Apple or Rockley or No Labs or, or any number of other companies that we've talked about. They seem to have taken a very different approach, which potentially is quite clever especially if all you're trying to do is to determine if someone's blood glucose level is normal or if it's elevated. And uh, the magic of what they're doing, if you want, seems to be very much software-based. They, they talk about a microphysical examination function, whatever the heck that is, that measures 10 different vital signs in about 60 seconds, and those are things such as like heart rate and the heart waveform and potentially other things. And based on that, deduce whether someone's uh, glucose levels have uh, risen or not. And we know from prior research that there are different vital signs that obviously change when blood glucose level changes. You know, we know that uh, both the diastolic and systolic uh, blood pressure rises when glucose levels rise. There are probably other physiological changes that occur as well. And so if they've been able to figure that out and harness that from an analytics perspective, that's actually very clever and pretty useful given the limitations of current hardware technologies. So as I think I mentioned a couple of times, there is still a lot we don't know about the Huawei Watch 4 including how reliable and accurate it is. And I believe they'll be conducting some trials which hopefully we'll learn about the results of over time. What we do know is that obviously, as we discussed, it will not be useful for people with uh, diabetes because they need to know specific numbers. There also doesn't seem to be any mention of what happens with hypoglycemic levels, if they can detect those. But, uh, you know, on the face of it, I think it's a pretty interesting and pretty useful first step. I hope other companies that are working on this take notice and maybe start with something like that for the average person or even for someone who has uh, pre-diabetes. Knowing how to control their blood glucose would be very useful. It would be very useful for all of us to know which foods spike our blood glucose and drinks uh, because... Um, you know, the general rules about uh, foods that do and foods that don't aren't actually very useful and have been debunked by science. So relying on rules of thumb isn't actually very useful. Now, the unfortunate thing here is that for those of us who live in the U.S., the Huawei watch will not be available in the U.S. We know that already because of the relationship issues between the U.S. government and the company going back a few years. That's been well documented. But hopefully other companies that provide uh, various wearables will take note of that and maybe put some effort and develop something similar and uh, release it in the U.S. market. So yeah, I think that pretty much sums up what we know. A very interesting first step, which may be useful for us, the general public. I will try to keep track of what's going on and bring updates to you over time. In the meantime, I hope you found this video useful and interesting or entertaining or whatever. In which case, feel free to give me some encouragement by giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. And yeah, thank you for watching. Be well and we'll talk to you soon. Take good care. Bye-bye.